Hey everyone, it's me, Kelly, and this is another United Stroke Alliance Facebook Live video. Um, today we're going to be doing a couple of fall crafts that I'm excited about, nervous about. We'll see how it goes. Um, but first, if you're new to United Stroke Alliance, we're a nonprofit who educates about the prevention, awareness, and recoveries for stroke. And we like to do these live videos a couple times a month to make sure that we're staying connected with our people, such as yourselves. Hey, Kinsley, she made it. Um, alrighty. So before I get far, uh, too far into the craft, though, <clears throat> I wanted to let you know that on Wednesday, uh, Mary Lee is going to be cooking some of her favorite comfort foods. So be sure to tune in to get um, some new recipes there. And then on Monday, it's going to be Stroke Camp Stories. So Mary Lee is going to be talking to a couple of our 2001, or 2001, oh my gosh, that's forever ago, 2021 uh, Stroke Camp Volunteers. And so um, they'll be sharing some of their favorite stories from, from Stroke Camp. So if you've never been to Stroke Camp, you'll have the opportunity to get to hear about some of that if you're a Stroke Camper um, you'll get to reminisce on some fun stuff. So we hope that you'll tune in for those next episodes. All right. So today, as I mentioned, I wanted to do a couple of crafts for you. Um, it's about decorating pumpkins, um, because obviously it's fall and that's what we do. I'm going to turn this off because I feel like that might be a little aggressive. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so because it's fall and we've got the pumpkins for the harvest and we want to know what to do with those. So I've got a couple of different options. Um, the first one is how to make a bow. Okay, so this is called a farmhouse style bow, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what that's called. Um, and so it looks, I've got my cute little pumpkin, my little white one here that I'm going to be working with today. Um, and so if you wanted to, you could just make a cute little bow, decorate it that way. Just looks very cute and sweet and harvesty, and that's fun. So um, just to make one of those really quickly, I'll show you how. I have a roll of burlap ribbon. This is the kind that has wire in it so that it's bendable. Um, not all of them come with this lace detail. Mine does, so that's what I'm working with. I am also using twine. And finally, just to zhuzh it up a little bit, I am also using this, um, I don't know what it is actually. It's just a sheer material that I've cut into similar size strips. Um, and I also cut like edging detail to make it look more bow-like, all right? So this is the size that I'm working with for this particular ribbon. Um, this is as wide as my ribbon is going to get now when it's completely made into the bow. This is as wide as the bow will be. So if you want one a little bit smaller, you would just make it shorter like that. Obviously, if you wanted it a little bit bigger, you could do that as well. So um, for mine, just to have a little bit of layer and detail to it, I have cut two sheets like that, and those will be um, used as the back layer of my bow. And then I also used, uh, I mean, I also cut my piece of the burlap ribbon. So this is going to be the next layer on my bow. So I'm just stacking them so they're all even together. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I never make my crafts perfectly. so. As you can see, that's where we're lining up with everything, okay? Simple as that. All right, the next thing that I did was I just cut several strands of that burlap twine, I guess is what it's called, not burlap. Um, and so these are, again, the similar length to the rest of the bow. If anything, maybe a little bit shorter or maybe a little bit longer, I don't know. Okay. So I have all of those in a layer just like this. Looks fairly boring at the moment. But what you're going to do is I'm going to take it right here in the middle and just start to pinch it together. Okay. 
I'm doing kind of a rumply pinch, which you can do however you like, but there it is, pinched. Then I will take another piece that has been cut to similar length as this, okay? It's a very similar length to that. And I'm literally just gonna start wrapping it around the back of the, starting with the back of the bow and then just wrap it around. Okay. So as you can see, just wrapping it around like this. And then once you get to the end, which mine actually handily lends up on the back about there, I'm going to use a tiny daub of our favorite hot glue on there to keep all of that down on the back. All right. You can cut off any extra that might, you know, be showing up in the front there. Give it a second to cool down, friends, because it's the number one injury I endure on this show. Okay. And then, so once that is cooled down and dried, you'll just start to kind of play with the ribbon, especially the stuff with the wires, because that will allow you to kind of open those both sides up like that. There you go. And then you can zhuzh up your little things a little bit. I like that those actually stayed kind of curled from being in the roll the way that it was. But I don't necessarily want them all just stuck together. So there we have it. A cute little farmhouse bow. Maybe you don't think it is, but I think it's cute. And, um, voila, you could either hot glue it on there, that's probably what I would do if this was the final thing I was doing this pumpkin, but it's not. Um, other things that you could use in here, though, are different types of ribbon. Um, you could do, like, the really thin type of ribbon in here, other types of lace, scrap material, uh, all, all sorts of things, um, that you could use to make these cute little bows. And again, I mean, doesn't have to be perfect. That's kind of the thing that makes them cute is that they're all different and they're just a little, you know, neat. Okay. So there you have it. One type of bow that we can do if you want to decorate like that. All right. The next one, <laughs> you know how I love to make crafts that I've never actually tried on here, uh, but I started to make another one and I think I get a good idea, so we're just going to go with it, right? Okay, the next one that I wanted to make, I bought, and I found these at the Dollar Tree, but I found a pack of witch hat picks. Um, they are just these little hat on a stick, basically. Um, it's actually made with pipe cleaners wrapped around a little plastic thing, but they're on a pick so you could stick it into a foam situation if you wanted to. Um, and then the other thing that I got was this, I don't know, like 100 pack of vampire teeth. That's actually only 12, but I got a pack of the, just the little plastic vampire teeth. So that's them. Okay, so my thought is, and I've seen it, so many other people have successfully done this, so my assumption is I'll be able to do it. How successful it is, is yet to be found. Um, okay, so tools for this project will be my little hat, which this one has broken off of the stick, but that actually turned out to be fine so far. My teeth, um, sharp kniffies, knives, and a spoon, probably? I had to assume. Okay, so what I have done 
is I've taken these tefers and I lined them up on my pumpkin where where I want them to go. I don't know how wide I want the hole or how how big this way I want it, but I do know how big I need it this way. So I marked that off. It's actually the exact width of this thing. So I marked it with a permanent marker and I've just kind of given it a preliminary uh, knife cuts in here. I'm gonna turn the camera down and we will take this ride together. Okay, all right, here we go. Okay, so when I did this, uh, the knife seemed to go in pretty easily. I can't recommend you do this with a funky gourd um, because that was actually the practice one and you can't really cut into those, I found. Okay, careful, careful now. All right, and then you push into that. All right, whoops, that went too far. Okay, here we go. I'm not sure how to get this out now. Hmm. Actually, always cut away from yourself, friends. Don't be like me. Okay, so, hmm. Then what happens? Ah, yes, it happened, it happened. Okay, so this little sliver started to come out. Oh, it's kind of like an apple, interesting. Okay, I got a sliver out. Um, so let's just carefully get the, I have to assume this is exactly the same as carving a large pumpkin. Um, it's just, you know, all right, let's go here. Although the guts are way in there, so I don't know if I'm really going to scoop all those out how messy how necessary is that gonna be we'll see we'll see okay so does need to be a little bit bigger we're just gonna keep carving until we can get them to actually just fit into the mouth oh boy this is exciting but also kind of uh, scary Okay. I also brought, you know, the spoon, as I said. Oh, golly. Hmm. I'll be honest, I don't even have a lot of experience carving a regular pumpkin, so. So that would explain why I don't know exactly what I'm doing here too. Okay, Harry. All right, well, it's happening. Look guys, it's coming out. Oh no, what is this? Okay, so I would also probably read techniques on um, how to um, like keep your pumpkin from getting funky and moldy when they're cut because I know that there's articles out there about that. I think you rinse them with like the inside of them with a some sort of a bleach solution. So water and a little bit of bleach. Um, and that will help your pumpkin last longer if you want it to last longer. Okay. Where's a lot of stuff? Sorry, everyone. Why didn't anybody speak up and say? can't see anything that you're doing. Okay. Just kind of 
of like taking that little spoon. I chose my tiniest spoon because I can get in here and like give it a good spin around inside of there. All right, well, ooh, okie dokie. Oh no, this is slimy. People probably know that happens. Okay, let's measure and see where we are with this. <gasps> okay, it's not quite big enough, I need to just it's always better to take off a little bit than too much. So we're just going to cut a little bit bigger. Just going to go that way a little bit more. Can you see what I'm doing here? Just a little tiny bit at a time. I will clean out all the guts at some point. Nope, I think it needs to be a little, uh... a little bigger still. Still more. Maybe it'll come out this way a little bit. So we're just gonna keep doing this until we can fit them in there and they don't want to escape from the mouth. Oops. Mm. Oh my. I'm pretty excited about this because I think it's going to be very cute when I get it done. Oh my, there's so much stuff in there still. Wow. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, Polly's got a great idea. She said she might try this with a fake pumpkin. Based on this experience, I would recommend it. All right, I'm just going to go, I keep saying, well, only do a little at a time, but that's not getting us anywhere. So let's just be brave. I'm not recommending you do this, but, but I'm going to do it. Oh, oh, don't be too crazy now. All right, let's see what's about to happen. Oopsie, I did it too big. Dang it. But maybe if I just a little bit wider. I think it's gonna be okay, guys. Ooh, looks like I can get all the. Yes, 
especially once I get all the stuff out of there, it will be. Yeah, I want it even a little bit wider because I want those teeth. This was uh, obviously not a very high quality one because, like, the teeth <laughs> make the jaw get all silly. So, you know, I want it to be wide enough so that the teeth aren't, <laughs> aren't closing, per se. All right. Okay. Okay, big bit. So, um, I don't know. I might maybe use a little bit of hot glue. Once I finish cleaning his mouth out for real, I might put a little hot glue in there to just keep them in place, but that's good. All right, let me clean this up really quickly because, and I planned for this, ha ha. Uh oh, come on, why aren't you working as well as I can't? Ah, see what I did there? Covered the bottom with the newspaper, so. Okie doke. Now we are back here. And, um, there's my guy. Like I said, I'll clean out his mouth more. But here with the hat, so needs eyes and I'm actually just going to use permanent markers because I have them on hand and it was very easy to find them. So um gotta look at where the face is and I'm just gonna draw some on. I have paint you could also poke holes in it if you felt so inclined. Uh, let's think about this. What kind of eyeballs do we want? I feel like we might want some, like, friendlier. Oh, didn't anticipate my arm getting stuck to it. Okay. So, let's... I'm gonna make my... Kind of girly. I hope I can get them... Sort of close. I feel like eyes you want to be similar anyway, right? That one will come there. Similar, right? And then I'm going to make pink irises on them. Because I thought that would stand out really nice on my white pumpkins. So I'm just going to... I'm actually even going to do like cat eye ones. The extra Halloween y. Um, obviously, green would have been a good choice for this, too. Oh. Okie doke. There's that one. And. Um, pro tip about using permanent marker on a hard either plastic surface or this pumpkin here, similar, uh, similar is that, um, nail polish remover will actually take that off. So if you make a mistake, like if Polly is drawing a face on her plastic pumpkin, try a little section, um with nail polish remover to make sure it's not going to take the coloring off of your plastic, but it should remove um, permanent marker from it as well. Ooh. Okay, I went for cute, but the cat I made it so scary. I'm not sure. Why do I do this scary thing? Oh my. Get my little. So 
So for example, <laughs> now that I'm terrified by this scary cat eye that I did, oh my goodness, that's, okay, this part was an oversight. Okay, but here is my scary pumpkin. <laughs> Uh, chances are I will redo the eyes because that's a little on the frightening side, but it's kind of cute too. I don't know. So anyways, there is my pumpkin. I'm going to finish cleaning out the inside of it, but otherwise there it is. Um, pretty sure that those teeth are actually glow in the dark as well. So, um, that will be fun at night. Yes. All right, everyone, so if you decide to make some bows or if you decide to do the uh, fake teeth thing in some pumpkins or just decorate pumpkins at all and you want to share your pictures, I would love to see them. It's always fun to see what you guys create as well. Um, so happy fall, y'all. We'll see you next time.